is my privilege to welcome you to New Bethel on this beautiful Lord's Day. We praise God that we're able to continue worshiping in the house of the Lord this morning. For those of you watching at home and for any visitors that we may have, we're pleased for you to be join, joining us this morning. We have new equipment and new cameras, and I think if you go back and see the replay, you will see a major difference. Um, I was looking at the test last night, and it was, it was pretty incredible. Um, there are a few things I would like to mention. Uh, Mary Cross is celebrating a birthday, August the 16th. And Tab Torbett is also going to be celebrating a birthday, August the 19th. Now, with that being said, Tab is turning 99 years young, okay? Uh, on Wednesday, August the 19th, and Kevin was planning on doing a drive by parade at 4 p.m. If you would like to be part of that parade, um, please go to Holy Taco, which is located in the Food City Shopping Center on North State of Franklin. Kevin's gonna be there at 3.50, is that right, Kevin? That's right. Um, in her blue Volvo to lead the parade. If you want to decorate your car, that's more than welcome. If you do not want to decorate your car or you don't have the means of it, that's cool too. Just go by and say ha to Tab because I know he would very much appreciate it. He is by far one of the most amazing men I think I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and I just hope that I can be somewhat like that of his age. Um, so remember our school faculty and staff as they start this here in a few weeks hybrid learning and having students back in the building and we want to pray for them, pray for the students that they stay healthy, pray for the faculty and staff as they stay healthy also. Um, session members, we will have a session meeting today at 6 p.m. using Zoom. Um, lots of announcements this morning. Um, the adult Sunday school class will resume on Sunday, September the 13th. Mary Lynn is going to be teaching that from 9.45 to 10.30 each Sunday morning. And all are welcome to attend in person or via Zoom, which is fabulous. Is there anything you want to add about that, Ms. Amen? We're going to resume our same book in March. Okay, so same book as you were in in March when everything, our world kind of took a, you know, crumble. Um, are there any other announcements that we need to lift up? Oh, Anne, um, if those of you that do not know, Anne took a fall, pretty bad one from what I understand. She's fractured her nose and she's fractured her hip. Is that correct, Amen? Okay, and so we need to be praying for her for healing. Anything yes, else? No well, that's good. That's very good. So we need to be praying for her for fast recovery so that, you know, things like that happen. It's scary. But other than that, is she okay? Amen. Okay. Some, pain. Some pain. Okay, so. Oh, goodness. So definitely keep her in your prayers. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, seeing none, um, let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and lives to be changed for God's glory. We invite you to take, take a time of reflective prayer and reverent silence, seeking the Holy Spirit in your personal time of worship. Let us worship God.
join me in our call to worship. God has forgiven us and drawn us close, reconciling us through Jesus Christ, who has lavished upon us the fullness of the blessed Holy Spirit. With glad and grateful hearts, praise the Lord. Um, Lord Jesus, Son of God, your blessings know no boundaries that faith cannot cross. Strengthen us to trust in your mercy, reach out for your healing, and receive your reconciliation. Let us pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. without fear to the one who yearns to embrace us, forgive us, protect us, and bless us. Let us join together. Holy God, we confess we have not been obedient to your will for us. We have sought justice for ourselves, but neglected justice for others. We have insisted on our rights but have not lived rightly in our relationships. We have desired mercy for our sins, but we have not offered mercy to those who have sinned against us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, free us from the prison of our disobedience. Help us to love as you have loved us, that our lives may testify to your abounding grace through Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, the gifts and the calling of God are irre irrevocable. Excuse me. Receive the gift of forgiveness and share that gift with others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us praise him now with as we sing our opening hymn, number 142, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Thank you. 
may be seated. That seemed like a very running marathon this morning, didn't it? All right. So how many of you have a dog? I think probably most of us at some stage in our life has had a dog, right? Now, some of us feed our dog dry food. Some of them may get wet food. And some of them may get table scraps, right? I think we've probably all done it. At one point in our time, or another, they, they've gotten some sort of table scrap. Well, in our household, my, my, my fur baby, she gets table scraps. Not that she really needs to get table scraps, but she gets table scraps. And she gets a treat every night, thanks to Mr. Jim. But, you know, she's your fur baby. Well, what if your fur baby was sitting there and you were eating at the kitchen table and they were begging, they were so hungry, you know, because you don't feed them, right? And they're sitting there at the table and they're just begging, well, what would you do? Hmm. Keep that in mind as I read our story for this morning. When Jesus came to earth, he came to preach and teach first to the Jews. That does not mean that he didn't love the other people of the world, but the first priority in his ministry on earth was to bring God's chosen ones to repentance. When other people saw Jesus healing the sick and lame, they followed him wherever he went. One day there was a woman from Canaan who came to Jesus and asked him to heal her daughter. Jesus explained to the woman, that is his first mission on earth, was to preach to the people of Israel. The woman refused to give up. She came closer, knelt down, and begged, Please help me, Lord. Jesus replied, It isn't right to take food away from children and feed it to dogs. The woman answered Jesus and said, Lord, that's true. But even dogs get the crumbs that fall from their master's plate. Jesus was so touched by the faith of the woman that he told her that because of her faith, her daughter would be healed. Even though Jesus came first to the Jew, he loved us so much that he shared his love, love with all of us. Aren't we grateful? I guess we are a little bit like that dog, our fur babies. Even though the meal was not prepared especially for us, it doesn't keep us from enjoying it. We gladly sit at our master's feet and thankfully receive whatever crumbs might fall from the table. Would you pray with me? Dear Father, Thank you for loving us so much that you shared your son with the whole world so that through him we could be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. <clears throat> you might have noticed in my voice it sounds a little crackly this morning there. I believe the sinuses are giving me a little bit of trouble this morning, so please forgive me for not being as clear as normal. It is good to see everyone this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord to celebrate and to lift up our hearts and our minds together in the Word and the scripture, to lift up our voice in song and celebrate and praise our Lord. It is the day that we come to humble ourselves, to rejoice in the good that God has given us and to share that time together in unification as those who walk in the, our faith and walk in the light of his Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we go to him in prayer this morning? Father, Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you have shown us this week throughout all the things that have gone on. We know, Lord, that your hand has been with us, that your blessings have bestowed upon us, that you have fed and nurtured us and guided us and given us the light toward the path that you called upon. Father, we are grateful for all the blessings that you have bestowed. And yet, Lord, as we come to you this morning, we are humbled by the fact that we, as your children, can come into the house of the Lord and celebrate and worship you and lift up our voice to you, calling upon the things that we see that need your help. Father, there are many who have suffered this week, perhaps through the virus or falls or a great other many issues that are taking place throughout this world. We ask that your spirit be on them and guide them and help them to heal and be nurtured. We pray for peace in our nation. We pray for peace in the world. We ask, Lord, that as our voice honors you and praises you, that it may echo throughout, that others may see and share in the same delight that your Son made possible for us. 
Lord, we lift up our thanksgiving for the men and women that serve this nation, for the men and women that serve our communities as policemen and firemen, as teachers and nurses, as those who come and share and care and nurture each and every one of us. Father, as we are your children, allow us to be witness to that love and that grace that your Son has shared with us. Allow us, Lord, to walk in the light and to hear the word and the wisdom that you have to share with us today, that we might rejoice in that word and that we may be fed upon that word so that others may receive the same as we receive today here in your house. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I love to read the Psalms because the Psalms, having been written, sometimes touch on words that we are not prepared for. Many of them are written so that they may be sung. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and sing to you this morning, but I do love the beauty of these words. Hear them. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. May the people praise you, God. May all the people praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the people with equity, and you guide the nation of the earth. May the people praise you, God. May the people praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Our second scripture reading this morning comes out of the book of Matthew, verses 10 through 28. Katie touched upon part of this scripture. It's the first part that can be a little bit shocking. Let us hear the words. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen, understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. What comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will not be pulled up by its roots. Leave them, they are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. Peter explained this parable to us. Whoops. Are you still so dull, Jesus asked? Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that came out of the, a person's mouth comes from the heart, and these defile them. From my heart comes evil thoughts, murder and adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony and slander. These are what defile a person. But eating what is unwashed hands does not defile them. Leaving the place, Jesus withdrew to a region in Tyre and Sidon, and a Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him 
and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was only sent, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She replied, yes it is, Lord. She said even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Thus ends the reading of the scripture. This is one of those scriptures where we find Jesus using some estranged language. One might have to ask him if Jesus were here today and he used such language, what would our younger people say? Would they be offended? After all, he does reply, it's not right to take the children's bread. He says, there's an exclusive group of people that I'm here for, the Jews. I'm here for the Israelites. I'm here for them. And you're not one of them. My food, my love, my grace is for them. kind of leaves an emptiness in us, doesn't it? It kind of reminds us that actually, as Katie indicated, we're the ones under the table hoping for the scraps. We're a part of the Gentiles. So is it an offensive language that's being used here. I grew up in a time when my parents taught me a, a saying that you don't hear anymore. Most of you, I'm sure, have heard it, that are here today, that sticks and stones might break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Sometimes they upset us, but they won't hurt us. Jesus is teaching the people. In that same time frame, he had spoken to them about a very specific conversation, defiling through their own words and an offensive language that would suggest this exclusiveness. This particular scripture is really nailed down to that's the way we've always done it versus inclusiveness. And that's what Jesus was describing. He was saying, your words perhaps can spoil it. Your words might even mar the chances to deliver his love and his grace. They might sully the way that others perceive this teaching. 
all definitions to defile, spoil, sully, mar, verbs, words. But basically Jesus stopped and he said, woman, it's not right. It's not right for me to do this. At first he didn't want to say anything. His disciples kind of pushed him and nudged him and said, do something, send her away. But that's not Jesus' way. That's not who Jesus was, not who Jesus is today. Obviously, he knew that she was a part of the great unwashed, that she was a part of the great society that people wanted to avoid. She was of the group of people not so loved, the Gentiles. The Israelites lived in this exclusiveness. They thought what they eat was important. The Gentiles eat what they wanted to eat. The Jews thought it was important to have every tradition just right, every scripture, just right. Everything had to be done the way it always had been done. And yet, this lady says, but Lord, you're more than that. Your love is more than that. Your grace is more than that. I have faith that God is bigger than that. It's very easy for us sometimes, isn't it? To shrink God down to our own needs, our own wants, our own beliefs. It's not really easy for us to go out into our communities, to go out into a missionary field, or to even go into a neighborhood that we might be a little scared of to talk about Jesus. Now here in the South, I know that most people are willing to share their faith a little bit. Most people are proud to say that they're Christians. But then you gotta go a little bit farther. You got to explain it a little bit. You got to talk about it just a little bit. Jesus was inclusive. The scraps there on the table did manage to get to the Canaanite lady and her daughter who was healed. Because Jesus said, Your faith has granted you your request. Your faith has made a difference. A great difference. And your daughter will be healed. Because she knew he was Lord. She knew Jesus Christ was sent there not just for the Israelites, but for everyone. It's interesting when we go back and we read in the scripture in Psalm in verse 67, 4 it says, May the nations be glad and sing for joy, where you rule the people equally and guide the nations of the earth. You know, when we walk through our lifestyles, when we look 
and our ministry, our mission from this church. When we look outside into our community, we're a lot of like-minded people. We look similar to each other in most cases. We have a Christian-based design in our communities. Our government is based on a similar inclusiveness for all. We're able to speak. We're able to share when we disagree with our governments. We're able to lift up our voice. We're able to vote. We're able to do a lot. But once you walk away from this community and throughout our world, you begin to see changes, controls, people whose voices are much different, fear that is much stronger, designs and political shapes that make it harder for people to worship God, to speak about God. Missionaries from this country oftentimes have to go and work. Missionaries often have to go and do something else besides preach the word in the scripture. Sometimes they just have to become friends in the community. Sometimes they have to do it privately in their house, in their living room, or in a coffee shop, somewhere where the words are not heard so well. We should learn how to convey God's words. We should learn how to share and be inclusive. It's important to understand that we can say things that are offensive. We can believe that certain traditions and guidelines that we like and enjoy and trust in may not define all of God's word. And that's where we hit the tripping block. That's where we stumble our toes sometimes is because if we believe in something strongly enough, if we think that that's the way it should be done, we allow a barrier between us and those who may need it just like the food that Jesus was talking about. The Gentiles eat much differently than the Jews. And the Jews thought it was what the people put in that made them bad. Jesus said it's what comes out that defiles us. Not what we put in, for that was created by God. That was made and blessed and given to us. And I must admit, most of you probably have watched food shows and stuff like that throughout the world. And I gotta admit, there's some things out there, I don't know whether I would eat or not, but there's a lot of things that I've tried. And some of them don't see, I, I really wonder how did we ever get to the point where we knew that that food was good or safe. It's kind of like chocolate. Chocolate's poisonous. Same thing with cashews. My grandmother loved cashews. But cashews cost a lot, and the reason is they're very dangerous to the people that pick the cashews. Really dangerous. But the nut inside is delicious. The same with the words of our Savior. There are dangers around us. There are traditions that we love and we like and will continue to do. 
But sometimes we have to get outside that comfort zone. Sometimes we have to allow our barriers to drop because there may be someone in some place that makes us uncomfortable as the Canaanite made Jesus who really needs your help, your voice, your faith shared with them. Shall we walk in his light and trust in our faith? Shall we pray? Lord, it is very difficult some for, uh, sometimes for us to restrain ourselves and not say things that are offensive. It's sometimes it's very hard for us to take that restraint and realize that what we believe may not necessarily be the same for other communities. Even our words across this nation and throughout the world are defined differently and suggest different meanings. Father, we don't want to defile ourselves by what comes out of our mouth. We understand that sometimes we can be rude and insensitive, exclusive, that we can lean on our own traditions and turn away people that may have different beliefs and traditions. Father, help us to see your light, your love. Help us to walk in your journey. Help us to be more caring and more sharing. Allow our souls to be freely inclusive, even when within we are trembling from the fear that what we say or do may be offensive. Guide us with your spirit, lead us, teach us, and help us on our journey. Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Our response of him is, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus,' verse 2. Shall we stand as we sing? of God go with you and keep you in his favor. May he let you walk in his light. May peace be with you. May his blessings be on you now and forevermore. Amen. <clears throat>